rocker arm shaft assemblies geometry what's going on here I just posted a video about losing a couple of rocker arm studs they snapped right off two of them yes sir -y. and I talked about coil bind and I measured for coil bound with maximum lift and I had 70 thousandths I made a video I posted it up I replaced the studs with two new ones that were long enough to work in this application it ran just fine I popped the valve cover on the other side just to have a look see all the bolts and nuts were in the right spot and it was running okay that night I had a dream yes I had a dream I said 70 thousandths on a stock cam that has 334 thousandths even with 1.4 ratio rockers I should have more left over than 70 thousandths I just using standard stuff here so it kept eating on me and I thought I gotta have a better look and I want to make sure no further damage was done inside this engine having rocker arm problems I want to raise the compression so let's get started and and get into this motor and take a look at it so I took it out of the car put it up here in the stand I wanted to check that coil bind issue again and I since I have a uh, device a uh, dial indicator for measuring the stroke I thought I want to see exactly what I do have for stroke and I was shocked to find out that I had 530 thousandths of lift it's like how is that possible with the stock cam I know I put a stock cam I looked at my videos and I repeatedly said it was a stock cam I've been telling everybody for years yeah doesn't this thing run great stock cam 2 liter engine with 1.4 ratio rockers man well now I come to find out it it has all that lift so I took the oil pump out and looked at the end of the camshaft to make sure there was nothing printed on it because stock cams come with nothing on them they're just blank just like this one right here there's nothing on it this is a stock cam and this was supposed to, i ordered a stock cam when you get a performance cam they mark the end of it they'll stamp it in and this is a ingle w100 which is a step between the 110 and stock and supposed to be an upgrade gives a little bit more performance a little bit more rpm well this cam didn't have anything off it obviously they sent me the wrong cam when I ordered my parts and I didn't check it so there you go even guy with who's been doing this for 25 years gets bit now and then so I want to take this opportunity though to talk to you about ratio rockers and I've got some examples here this is not my uh, best day I'm, I'm trying to hurry through that but this is an opportunity that's too good to pass up I want to share with you what stock rockers look like now these here's a stock rocker shaft right here it has the spring cliffs these are what wears out if you put performance springs or performance camshafts sometimes these can uh, just wear and they'll fall off into your valve cover hopefully not go down to your engine uh, you can run them for a few miles but they will give out and it's just not a good idea you need to upgrade the stock rocker shaft assembly the forged rocker arms are fantastic but the way they've adjusted it here to keep it quiet and smooth sounding it works great with a stock setup everything stock works great for stock but you change anything in the game and it, the problems start coming at you and so do the dollars that dollars start going to the people that are selling you the parts now I want you to look where the push rod goes in this hole right here this is where the push rod goes see how nice and centered that is you'll hear people claim that there's 1.25 ratio rockers made by Volkswagen this is what they look like right here okay that same pocket that had the that I just showed you and the other one is being centered see how it's off centered see how shitty that looks it looks like oh man they screwed up they put it over here to the side no that's what a 1.25 rocker sells like now they're supposed to be forged they have the same markings on the sides of them as the stock ones do you know they've got the Volkswagen emblems and numbers and stickers on there so you take it for what it's worth 
Okay, same same looking mess here. Hope that shows up right. Okay. So this this looks like it's the same thing. This is your this is your first cheap upgrade. You'll hear this all the time. Put some 1.25 rockers on. You can even supposedly add those to a a Ingle 110, uh, a C35. Uh, many of the cam manufacturers will even advertise it and suggest it that way. Okay to use 1.1 or 1.25 rockers on this camshaft. Need to pay attention to what they recommend if you want it to get the full life out of it. Now, when you go to uh, the more expensive aftermarket ratio rockers, it changes completely. You have a soft foot that it rides. And the adjusting uh, screw and cup move down to the push rod side. They come off the spring and move to the opposite side. On a stock setup, you have standard push rods that fit in, in here, and they will articulate okay. When you start moving it to get the 1.4 ratio, it will pop and rub and start to come out of the socket, and you it lead you to failure. So what you need to do is have a special push rod that has a ball end on it and when the ball fits made for this cup and it it fits and it it articulates and it works that's what you have to do when you step up to these scat or other type products this is an AA advertises a 1.25 in reality is a 1.3 here's a scat 1.4 that I had on my 2 liter and finally had failure with the studs now was it because I did not have the stock cam in it I didn't have a ratio rocker cam designed for it. Who knows? I had no issues with coil bind. I've run it for quite a few years, put quite a few miles on it with no issues, but it's time came and, and it's done. So I am satisfied that I discovered the right thing. Now, adjusters. You notice that uh, this doesn't have, this just has a cup on the end. Now, on the, on the setup here, I'm using, I don't know if you call these the elephant feet or the swivel feet or what, you call them whatever you want. There's a ball in the end of that with a little flat spot on it, and it takes up space. If you're using, doing that on a stock engine, adding these, you're going to have to raise your rocker arm assembly up. And they have shims underneath here. You can see them. They come in different thicknesses right here turning it there in order to keep your draw correct your your rocker arm geometry otherwise your adjusters won't adjust you can't get the space in there uh here's some stock aluminum push rod tubes even though i have heavy duty single springs i'm going to use these stock push rod tubes i know many people that do it and everybody's going to recommend that you don't do it that you go to chrome moly but let me tell you something Chrome only push rods with these kind of ends are much heavier than stock aluminum. And yes, you just go ahead and you can buy some aluminum. You get those fancy double tapered aluminum with the nice ends on them. And then custom cut them to size. They're only 250 bucks. And I have scads and scads of these stock ones. Even if, if you... The only time on a single heavy duty spring you're going to have to worry about it is if you uh, let your... Uh, gap get too much and it'll start hammering on the uh, ends of that but these are supposed to grow as your engine grows and as it gets hot it gets wider and these get wider with it with the chrome molly I can always tell when my engines getting warmed up and hot because of the valve clatter this will make it a little bit quieter running and the tolerances will be staying more even and I'll be watching the ends of these real close taking the rocker arm assembly off and checking it out first off for this trip I'm gonna be going with the uh, one-to-ones and then when I get home I'm gonna try these 1.25s here's another brand of uh, I call these the swivel foot rockers and I was gonna put these on but I've been told by two different people that they both had failures on more than one set of these that the cup or the the it just it went one guy in 50 miles he said his valves got so noisy and he he adjusted them and then uh, drove it again and he had one that ground up they'll just they're grinding themselves to pieces so quality control sucks they're obviously a good company been around a long time same with scat I don't know what the deal was on those broken studs a lot of times even these good companies they farm out some of the work and and you know they sell it in-house under their own name 
I mean, that's what they do with everything. Let me clear my head here. So, what are we doing? Uh, I checked a couple of pistons here. Uh, I had a ring gap. Both of them were within a quarter of an inch other and one of them was like at seven o'clock so i'm just kind of checking this out i took did a compression test at 6.6 .6 to 1 at 5,000 feet altitude i had 95 <laughs> pounds compression the starter was having a, a lovely life i'm taking out uh i had 195 thousandths worth of shims i had three shims i'm going with one eighty-five thousandth shim that's going to allow me to use the stock push rod with one sixty thousandth shim and a stock rocker shaft but the solid style it's bolted on the ends and i'm getting rid of the wave washers because i'm running the single heavy duty performance spring and there does appear that i have a performance camshaft i believe it to might be an eagle 2239 that somebody forgot to mark and threw it in the stock cam bin because that's what i asked for that's what i thought i received and there was no markings on the end of the camshaft so another screw up and uh uh lucky that for me that i had the low compression and i check things pretty fair as i go i just didn't think to check it so another example of got to be watching everything these days that you get and you have to have a lot of tools to do it um i've been doing it a long time each time i got a new project or a new job i i added more tools to my uh complement of tools and and that's just the way it goes uh Everybody's got cell phones. They get interrupted so many times during the day while they're building. You need to be focused. You need to concentrate. Being interrupted and no matter what you're doing, even making a video, <laughs> phone goes off and you lose your train of thought and you get flustered. Uh, you Most you know plants or places where they're making stuff or if you've got a good mechanic at a shop hopefully he's a dedicated mechanic in the back and they've got a secretary to answer the phone or a counterman or somebody else to take care of the little details so that he can stay focused and complete his build and i guarantee you anybody that's done this will tell you when you're building an engine you do it in stages you do it in steps it's like oh should i put those pistons on uh okay i'm gonna get this Piston's done, and then I'm going to go to break, or I'm going to go to lunch. Then you come back, and you start another phase of your build. But you try to complete things and do it, and you develop a rhythm, and you won't forget things, and there won't be mistakes. That's the kind of guy that you want building your engine. Not somebody that's rushed, answering the phone, trying to be jack of all change. They say on every job interview, oh yeah, we're looking for a guy that can multitask. Well, bullshit. Multitasking makes mistakes. You need to stay focused and get a job if you're going to be the phone guy then you know what i'm saying is turn that cell phone off leave it in the charger someplace else if you're building an engine stay focused stay on track same thing with a transmission or anything that's complex so anyhow that's my little rant for the day and uh a little bit more about racial rockers and the different products that are available out there and how they work and uh, I feel satisfied that uh, when I put this engine back together, I'm going to trust it for a nice long time. So thanks for watching. Thanks for subbing. Easy Jeezy out.